This is Boxing with the Truth, and I am the Truth. Today is August 30th, 2015, and today we have with us Tommy Kryptonite Carpinski. How you doing today, Tommy? I'm doing good. Yourself? I'm doing great. I appreciate taking time to do the interview. I know you have a huge fight coming up. Uh, it's for a world title, and it's going to be the biggest fight of your career. We're going to get to that in a minute, but I want to uh, update the fans a little bit on uh, who you are and... Uh, Learn, le learn a little bit uh, how you got involved in, in boxing, and then we're going to work our way up to the title fight. Sounds good. So you do fight as a southpaw, right? Correct. And uh, you actually live in a small town uh, called Ada. A lot of people might not know where that is. It's actually in Pennsylvania. And uh, your pro record is 25 wins, 14 knockouts, 4 losses, 1 draw, right? That's correct. And your uh, trainer is actually uh, your father, Tom Sr., right? Yes, sir. Okay, so now take me back to the beginning. How did you get involved in boxing? Well, uh, from the time I was a, a young kid, uh, my dad had always trained amateur fighters, and uh, uh, we always went to the gym, my brothers and I, and, and uh, just had a good time with it. And it we just kind of just, you know, kept it going as I got older. I actually didn't. I actually didn't take the sport uh, quite seriously until I was about 19 or 20 years old. Okay, now, did you start out as a wrestler? Uh, when I was in high school, um, I wrestled my junior and senior years uh, of high school. That was it. I, did, I fared well. I was just a little over 500. You know, I was like, my wrestling record, I think, was around 30 and 10 or 30 and 15 or something like that. And, uh, the reason I actually did that is because my brothers, uh, they're younger than me, but uh, wrestled the, their pretty much their entire childhood from probably from age five to, you know, when they graduated high school, they were really good. And so I just gave it a try for two years, and I fared well. And, and uh, it was a good, you know, learning experience with the one-on-one -on -one situation. And, and uh, you know, it helps me even to this day. Okay, now your two brothers that you're talking about, they're actually undefeated boxers, right? Yeah, they are. Yeah, one's a uh, middleweight. And one is a heavyweight, and they're, they're both doing well. You know, uh, things are going good. Okay, now you were just talking about the gym that you were uh, working in with your dad in the beginning. Now, is that the gym, the one you're referring to, was that the one that was in the post office? Uh, it was, yes, sir. We uh, we trained out of an old post office building that, that uh, my dad had owned and rented to the post office for a while. And then, then um, about three, three years ago or so, uh, my grandfather passed away, and before he did, he bought an old abandoned church uh, that it j had just recently closed in the same town that we live in, and we train there to this day. So, so uh, we we make do with with what we have. It's it's working out uh, quite well. And I understand that you guys train on wrestling mats, and that you absolutely have no ring in there, right? No, we've never had a ring. Uh, it, it's never really bothered me. Uh, we we occasionally travel to to spar in places that have rings, depending on who we're sparring. But uh, uh, I've had no trouble fighting in a ring or you know transitioning from the ring to the mats in sparring. It hasn't been an issue at all. As a matter of fact, it uh, it helped it helps me to uh, fight pretty good in the center of the ring, especially as of recent. I've gotten a lot better at, at, at fight more toward the center of the ring and. and keeping my back off the ropes so uh you know we we improvise and we don't have a uh some guy or promoter or anything with a ton of money to give us what we need so so that's what we're, we're we have okay now i know family's pretty important to you uh a lot of your family's involved in your career right yeah i mean uh my brothers are pretty much it's my brothers and i who spar each other all the time uh where we come from there are no really other professional fighters so uh we've had to improvise and make do with what we have and and without my brothers being my sparring partners my dad's my trainer and uh we put our heads together as far as training goes and, and sparring and uh you know it's worked out really well we it's been effective and with the four of us and the more experience we gain uh, we we just keep getting better, so so it, it's going good. And don't your mother and your wife like help you with details outside the ring as well? Oh yeah, yeah. My 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 wife Andrea, she's a registered nurse, and, and uh, when, when she's all working, she's helped me in some manner. Uh, you know, 
people don't realize, like, you know, you need you need food, you need your your clothes prepared, everything like that. Like, and that's overlooked a lot. And for a fighter, that's super important, you know. And, and, and uh, she she handles a lot of the, the finances and things. And, and, and so I don't have to worry about anything but getting up and, and going to work to fight at Donna Stevenson. You know, I, I keep a pretty clear head. And, and my mom's also the same way. She... She does a lot of cooking when uh, Andrew's at work, and, and she's a big support and, and uh, helped me with that aspect as well. So it, it's just a, it's a family process, and also my sister recently got a, a promoter's license to, to put on some shows for my brothers and I uh, to, to you know boost our career. So everything's working out. Okay, now are you you consider yourself a blue collar guy, right? Now are you a farm boy too? Do you live on a farm? No, I'm. I'm, I'm I come from, I'll say I come from a blue-collar uh, uh, town. You know, I'm a registered nurse as well. I have a college education, and, and my wife does, and my sister is an attorney, and her, my parents are both educated with some degrees in teaching, and, and uh, so we're all educated, but it's, it's a it's a hard-working community here. It's coal miners, teachers, nurses, railroad workers, and everybody around here is just, just working-class people. And, uh, you know, you, you approach the, we approach training in the same manner as everyday life. We get up and go to work and, and uh, you know, good things are happening. Okay, so do you have any, like, habits or anything you need to do before a fight? No, I don't really have any rituals. We, we just, uh, we just get up and, and go to work and lead up to the fight. Nothing, nothing has changed for this fight as compared to any other fight. It's to say we, we pretty much have the same routine. Uh, the only thing that's changed in my career as of recent is in the past two years, I've become an, a full-time fighter. And, and, and I've really, really experienced some improvement in my boxing because I've been able to completely devote myself to the sport. Whereas uh, before, you know, I was working full-time as a registered nurse and, and training to the best of my ability. But, but things have really come together in the past two years or so since I've become a full-time fighter. Okay, and let's talk about this fight. Just so the fans know, um, you are facing Adonis Superman Stevenson, who's 26 and one. His only loss is to Nar is to Darnell Boone, who uh, knocked him out or TKO'd him in the second round. Some people say it was a fluke. Some people say it wasn't. Um, and then there's other people that say that Adonis Stevenson kind of ducks people and handpicks people just to make sure he doesn't lose his title. But you are facing him for the WBC World Light Heavyweight title September 11, 2015 in Toronto, Canada. And that will be uh, on Premier Boxing Champions on Spike TV at 9 p.m. Eastern and it is the main event, correct? That's, that's correct. Yeah, everything you just said is right. Uh, you know, I don't know about losses being flukes or, or, or you know, him hand-picking opponents. Uh, I think uh, for the casual fan, first off, First off, the, the, I will say that I didn't personally see the loss to Darnell Boone, but it's not a fluke because Darnell Boone has a history of, of beating good fighters and knocking good fighters down. He knocked down, he knocked down Andre Ward. You know, he stopped Stevenson. He had a very close decision with Kovalev. This guy can fight, and a lot of people take him for granted just because of his record. So, for Darnell Boone's a really good fighter, and. With as far as Stevenson handpicking opponents, it's another situation where uh, you know the casual boxing fan doesn't quite understand the negotiation process uh, between fighters. And I and I think the the, the main thing as far as the handpicking goes is people think he's ducking Kovalev, and and then other people say Kovalev's ducking, ducking him. And it, it's just a negotiation process. You've got two big networks who have two big superstars, and it's just hard to come to terms for these guys to fight each other. So, you know, they both look elsewhere. And, and uh, it's it's not, it's kind of sad in a way, but in a way it's good for other guys to get an opportunity to fight for world championships. So, you know, it, it's a good thing for me. I'm, I'm glad. No, I, to I totally elsewhere. agree with you in that aspect, that you are getting an opportunity and that you've earned your way up to face for this world title. Um, this is your second world title um fight unfortunately you lost your first one to Nathan clearly so it's not like you just came out of nowhere and everybody's saying well who's this guy and he's a bum and he gets to fight Adonis Stevenson that's not the case at all you have a good yeah. record you have fought some tough guys and you have fought for a world title before 
So just yeah. let me clear that up. I didn't mean that he handpicked you. It's just that no, some no, I understand. I understand. some people have criticized him. He I know this is his sixth title defense, but some people have criticized him. Like you said, he might be ducking Cole off. He, there's some other people that have mentioned uh, his name that he doesn't really seem to want to get in the ring with. So I mean, he does take on tough opponents, but it just seems like he chooses and kind of picks which ones. And yeah, I yeah. think with Darnell Boone. I think he picked him wrong, and, and Darnell Boone obviously, you know, upset him. And I personally think that you got a pretty good chance of upsetting him. So, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you 100. percent Like I said, uh, I, you know, Darnell Boone, he, he really does get the credit he deserves. The guy's a real good fighter. He's a dangerous fighter, and people overlook him because of his record. And that's that's a terrible mistake in boxing. And, and like you said, it, it could be the same situation with with the fight with Miss uh, Stevenson now. So, so hopefully, it works out that way. And now you've actually. Um, now, like I said, it will be on Premier Boxing Champions. I know some boxers, uh, the, the lights, the TV, all that, they, they don't know how to react to that. But you actually have been on Showtime and ESPN before. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the situation as far as the, the moment or what you want to call it, it doesn't really affect me, doesn't intimidate me. Like, one thing you learn is you said I lost for a world title before. You know, I, I fought these guys, Paul Farrah, cleverly, Marat. You know, Chad Dawson, that's four, that's four, two of which are world champions and four guys that are legitimate top ten light heavyweights. You know, and uh, when you fight those guys, you realize that, that no matter what the situation is leading up to the fight, how many media members are there, how many people are in the stands, it's still just a, it's a fight. When a bell rings, you got two guys out there fighting. And you don't learn that until you actually experience it. So, so I'm, I'm far better prepared for for that type of moment now it's been a great learning experience for me in the past i've fought those guys and it's led me to this moment so so uh, we're, we're more prepared now and uh i know we talked earlier about the nickname kryptonite and uh like you you basically have been watching stevenson for quite a while even before he won the title so what type of things do you think you're gonna have to do to win this fight convincingly well here, here the, the our philosophy is we have to go out and just fight our fight Everybody knows, anybody who knows boxing at all knows that, that Adonis Stevenson's bread and butter is the left hand, whether it's, whether it's from a counter position, whether it's from a lead position, whether it's behind a jab, over the top, uppercut, it doesn't matter. If the guy has probably close to the best left hand in boxing, we understand that, but that's not the only thing you can prepare for. And you can't also have a situation where you're so concerned about it that it takes you out of your style. So we, we just, we fight every fight and try to fight our fight. And uh, I'm not going to give away any secrets or say we have some huge game plan. We're, we're coming to win a fight, whether it's knockout in the first round or 12-round split decision. It doesn't matter to us. We just want to win. So so we're, we're prepared for, for 12 rounds of fight. And, and that's, yeah, that's what it comes down to. Okay, and if you win this world title, what type of opportunities does this open for you? I think it's going to be an absolutely, first off, it's going to be... Being the um, uh, huge upset, with, which you know most analysts would agree, it's going to be a huge upset because of the situation. But for me, uh, coming from where I come from, to have got this far and then win a world championship just proves that that you know anybody can do anything as long as they put their mind to it. And and I'm sure that that it'll open up all kind of doors for me as far as uh, promotional opportunities and big fights down the line. And and my resume proves that that. I'll fight anybody anywhere. You know, I take any opportunity granted, any opportunity given to me because, like I said, I, we come from a very small area. Uh, we don't have a big promoter, so when fights come our way, we really have to consider everyone carefully because it's not like these opportunities come around once a week. So, you know, we're just we're just glad to be here. Okay, and you did mention that you've never actually seen the fight of Darnell Boone beating him. Is there a reason why that you haven't watched that? I've seen he's the no, only guy I, that's I, ever I, beat him. First off, uh, I've looked for it, and I, I've I don't know where to find it. I mean, you know, you look on YouTube or Google, and I can't find it. Now I saw the fight where Stevenson beat Darnell Boone, but I didn't. I've never saw the footage of Stevenson getting knocked out by Boone. Okay, uh, so you course. so you have actually looked for it. Yeah, oh yeah, I look for it. And, and you know, I, I look, I look for anybody my anybody my weight class. I try to familiarize myself with. A lot of fighters say I don't watch film on other guys. It's not so much that I, it's not so much that I study film on, but I want to know who, who my competition is. You know, so I mean, I watch every every single light heavyweight fight that comes on TV, 
whether it's uh, the ESPN six rounder or the the, the WBC light heavyweight title, I'm, I'm going to watch the fight. You know, I'm, I'm a huge boxing fan. And I want to know what's going on, and not only my weight class, but in boxing in general. So, uh, I, you know, I watch every fight. Okay, so for a boxing fan that's never seen you fight, why should they come out and watch this fight or tune in to Spike TV on September 11th to watch this main event? Because we're looking for a huge upset. It's, it's the light heavyweight world championship. we got nothing to lose. Uh, we're, we're, we're prepared uh, mentally, physically, and, and, and very excited for the opportunity. And we're going to do everything we can to, to, to win a, the title on September 11th. It, it's going to be a great night and it's probably going to be a great fight. Okay, do you consider yourself uh, a guy that just goes in a ring and takes care of business, or do you like to engage in trash talk every once in a while with your opponents? No, I, I don't. I don't do any trash talking. Um, I don't. I don't really care what my opponent says about me leading up to the fight. It doesn't matter. Even even the uh, like the, the the stare down situations before a fight, the, the the lead up of what this fighter says or that fighter says. It has no bearing on the way I fight in the ring because no matter what's said before the fight, no matter what happens, the bell's going to ring and someone's going to win and someone's going to lose, and life goes on. And for, for any fighter to be intimidated or to feel overconfident is it, just crazy. You just, you just know, you just have to know yourself and be confident, prepare 100% and go out there and fight your fight and win. Okay. And that's all I worry about. So now you've had two fights in your career outside the country. Now this is going to be your third fight outside the country. And unfortunately those other two fights you both lost. Do you think that has anything to do with the traveling or the jet lag or the, the training outside the country or anything? Or did you just, it just wasn't your night in those fights? No, no, I'm, I'm all, I'm all got to make excuses. I lost the fights. The guys I, the guys I fought uh, that night were better than me. And, but I'm a better fighter now. You know, uh, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, I, I traveled, that's why I lost the fight, or I had this happen or that happen. You know, those guys are good fighters. You know, they're, they're top 10 world-class guys, and, and uh, anybody can win, anybody can lose. Th those experiences are, are part of the reason I am where I am today, and, and uh, I learned a lot from, from going to Germany and going to Wales, and, and uh, you know, uh, even though I lost the fight, it, it made me the, the fighter I am today, and I'm a lot better from those experiences. So I don't have any excuses. No, I just lost the fight. You know, it happened. Okay, so is there one person that inspires you in your life inside and outside the ring? Uh, no, no one's a, a bigger, I should say, role model than, than my dad as far as, uh, you know, not only teaching me to be a good fighter, but to, to be a, a good person. I can't, you know, he, he's, he's been everything in my life as far as that goes. Um, as far as, as far as individual fighters go, uh, you know, like my favorite fighter to watch is Marvin Hagler, but an inspiration fighter to me is a guy that a lot of people I think overlook is Glenn Johnson, who he fought for, what, three world titles, and finally, I think in his fourth world title fight, he won. You know, and, and he was right off for I don't know how long, but he, he just kept plug along and, he, and look what he did. He became a fighter of the year in 2004 when he knocked out Roy Jones and beat Tarver and, and uh, it kind of it's not completely similar but it makes me think like man I'm kind of in this situation right now so, so it, it, he's an inspiration in a way. Believe it or not he's actually still active. <laughs> yeah I know, I know I know. So tell me something that your boxing fans don't know about you Tommy. Uh, I don't have any secret. You know, I'm a pretty down to earth guy. I'm, I'm not flashy. I, my brothers and I, we hunt, we fish, we just have a good time. I'm, I'm, as, uh, I'm just your normal everyday person. You know, uh, I'm a big sports fan. Uh, football. I watch a little bit of baseball. I, I love NBA basketball. You know, I'm just a just a normal everyday guy. Nothing special. Okay, so sum up uh, your career to this point in one statement. It's been a long road. <laughs> you know, uh, what can I say? World title fights, Germany, Wales, now fighting for fighting Dallas teams and all from all from just this little town that I come from. Uh, I'm very proud of it, and and, and uh, you know we we want to continue to improve and get better and win a world championship. So, so that's about it. Okay, and how has the boxing affected your life up to this point? It's it's been an absolute huge. Um, I don't know how it's been a great experience for me. Uh, you know, I've seen so many things. 
you know, going to those different countries of fighting and experiencing and how people, even in different, even in different countries, you know, fighters get a lot of uh, respect for, from a lot of fans because it's such a one-on-one sport and it takes a whole lot of courage just to, to step in, step through those ropes and fight somebody. So uh, you learn a lot about yourself in boxing. It, it boosts your confidence outside the ring as well. You know, you everything I do, I'm like, man, I fought these guys. I can definitely do this. It's it's a it's a great confidence booster in life. And uh, you also have to make a whole lot of sacrifices. You know, the, the training and, and traveling and, and missing out on things. But it's it's been well worth it. So if you win this WBC World Light Heavyweight title on September 11th, what's the first thing you're gonna do? I'm probably going to. I'll probably be on cloud nine for so long that I don't know. You know, uh, you know, you always hear about guys winning titles or Super Bowls or World Series. They don't sleep for days because of the the extreme high, you know, of, of such a huge accomplishment. So I'm not sure how I'll react. I have no idea what I'll do, but I do plan on winning. I can tell you that much. Well, I know one thing. If you win a world title and bring it back to that small town of uh, Ada, they better have a huge parade for you. <laughs> yeah, well, it'll be as many people <laughs> to live around here, which are many, but I'm sure everybody will be just as excited as I am, so it'll be a great experience. Maybe the mayor will even give you the key to the city. <laughs> yeah, 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 every, every 200 people, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I want to promote the fight one more time. Adonis Superman Stevenson, 26-1 and one versus Tommy Carpinci, also known as Kryptonite, hopefully against Superman. And uh, he has 25 wins, 14 knockouts, 4 losses, and 1 draw. They will be squaring off for the WBC World Light Heavyweight title September 11, 2015 in Toronto, Canada. If you can't make the fight, tune in to Premier Boxing Champions on Spike TV, 9 p.m. Eastern. This is the main event. They are both southpaws, and it should be a war. Anything you'd like to say to your fans, Tommy, before we uh, end the interview? I just want to thank everybody for all the support, and uh, I plan on putting on a great show September 11th. Thank you very much. All right, and the truth has spoken.